Hi everyone, my name is Rohit and today we'll talk about RESTful Web Services. When we talk about web services, let's take a very simple example of what could come to your mind. Well, almost everybody in India is a cricket freak and uh, the problem which we have in our life is uh, there are good matches which are playing when we are in office working. So what do most of us do? If we have access to the internet, we go to Crickinfo and then we start select the match which we are interested in and start getting the updates. So Sachin scored this thing, Dhoni got this match, uh, things like that. And that's a, that's the easiest example of uh, web services which I can give to you. Now Crickinfo um, and similar sites are accessible via browser or a fat client on your desktop or even mobile has applications which help you get latest cricket score. And this is what web services is all about. There's a central place where the information is and you're accessing it uh, using different uh, browsers, desktops and mobile. And, and that's what web services really are. Now, typically when web services are of uh, two types, SOAP and RESTful. Uh, RESTful is a newer type of web services, much more lighter, easier to do, understand. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. Let's go back uh, a little bit and try to understand why web services actually came into picture and what is the ultimate dream when it comes to web services. Now let's say today you wanna plan a trip to New York uh, for work. What you would do is you need to uh, make a plane booking, make a hotel booking, and even a cab booking, let's say. How would you do this thing? Uh, you would go on a website, access different sites for uh, airplane booking, hotel booking and cab booking and book things accordingly and then you have an itinerary that I have got a cab which will pick me up at 7 o'clock my flights at 11 then the flight lands over there at uh, 2 p.m. and I've got a cab from there to the hotel and then does the hotel booking for seven days and while coming back same thing I got a cab a plane booking and again a cab now let's see if something changes in my itinerary not because I changed it because something went wrong let's say the flight was delayed like there was a Mumbai airport is currently closed because of rain so the flight got delayed now I will have to go and look for an alternative hotel booking alternative cab booking because one of the things didn't start didn't work out ideally what I would like is to talk to a mother of all travel desk which would do things for me so I go to this mother of all travel desk and here I use it's in this guy's interface to book my itinerary to basically put my itinerary into action so I booked my hotel plane and cab booking using this and this guy is an intelligent agent now it's constantly looking for is, is there any change in the itinerary if there is it's going to by itself go and look for options and SMS and email me the options that okay which options do you want or if I give it the privilege it will do everything for me it will change my cab booking change my hotel booking change my plane booking and that's what I really want what I really want is automation and this is one example of the travel industry but we want automation across various system companies have SAP ERP uh, cloud-based systems a lot of things which which work together so web services are, the, are a way where the systems can talk to each other and that's where web services come into picture let's try to understand rest uh, for web services restful stands for representational state transfer protocol um, that word doesn't make any sense to me so i'm not going to try to explain that word to you but i'll give you a simple example you're employing a company you want to change your address details so you go to, to your HR for your employee information your HR is your endpoint she will take out your file from a file cabinet make a changes over there and put it back we're talking about paper based system so that's why this example similarly you want to change your investment details for your tax issues you don't go to your HR you go to your accounts guy and similarly you want to change the place where you sit in an organization you go to the admin department you don't go to accounts department so for each particular need you have a different endpoint and that's what rest is all about 
Rest says the same thing. Let's look at how do you organize your directory structures. Let's say you're having a directory with you know information about employees. You'll organize it like organization, users or employees, then folders with their uh, employee ID, and then again things like this. This is how we typically organize things. And rest is about organizing where things are. Now let's say I want to get all the information for a company name xyz.com of all the users it has. So I will actually visit xyz.com slash users because user is the endpoint where I'll get information about all the users. But if I'm looking for the information of one particular user, I'll go to a much more finer URL. I'll go to xyz.com slash users slash one. One is a user ID or the employee ID. Furthermore, if I want this particular user's address, I'll go to slash users slash one slash address. So we are organizing the web. People might say, why don't, why don't you use query parameters and things like that? Well, we can use them. They also give us unique URLs, but this is much better way of organizing. We're going to organize on the primary information of the entity. In this case, users and address and the user ID. Let's look at example of, you know, when we do RESTful calls, how does it look like? This is a RESTful call in which we are using XML to exchange information. So in this case, I'm saying get me the information for user with ID 1. And I'm saying the host is xyz.com and I'm saying it's a GET request because I'm going to get the information. And I'm saying, boss, I accept XM application XML. I do not want HTML page. I do not want some other thing. I want my the data in a X application XML format. And this is what I get back. I get back a user XML with ID, name, address, skill. Now if I need to create a new uh, user, I would put the following XML content on slash users. And I'm saying, boss, I'm sending you application XML. That's why I'm saying content type is application XML. And I'm saying I need an application XML back. So the put response is the result is three. This says that the employee ID is three. Then I can do a get again with the employee ID three and get the same information. And I'll get Rohit Pune C++. So what is this RESTful all about? It's nothing but a HTTP call. A HTTP call which you can make from your Ajax uh, JavaScript code. A HTTP call which you can make using your Java code. You can use URL class of Java for doing that. You can use uh, Apache's HTTP client library for doing that. So understand, what, where all do we, do, do we get information? First thing, we get the information in the URL itself, stating what is my intention or which entity I want to talk to. Then in my HTTP headers, I say, what kind of request is this? Is this a put request, a get request, a post request, or a delete request? What am I sending? And that's why I say content type. What do I expect back? That's why I say application XML. And then I can put information in the body if I'm giving something. So there are four verbs for every noun. Now what is a noun? A noun is an entity. And there are four verbs because you want to act on this. Now, now let's look at the example that, okay, we've got example.com slash customers123 and that's where I'll find a customer with ID123. What kind of operations can I do on this customer? I can do CRUD operations, create, I can do create using post, put, I can do retrieve using get, I can do update using post and I can do delete using delete. And these are all HTTP operations. And look at the beauty, the get, put, post delete operations are matching with the CRUD operations of a database. That's what the beauty of RESTful really is. Let's look at one more thing when you talk about we so far we're talking about application XML, but a popular form of using REST is uh, application JSON. So what is JSON actually? So JSON is represented over here like this. Now think about uh, your model classes or entity classes. Anything in, can, in the world can be represented by either a map or a list and that's what we're doing over here. We're representing users over here and users has a list of users 
and each user has a map of information name, logic, address, Pune, skill, Java. And in JavaScript world, when I do this where result is equal to this, I can say result.users bracket zero name is equal to logic, and that's how I can access the information. The best part about JSON for the JavaScript world is that using eval, you can instantly convert a JSON string into an object. Whereas if you're using XML, it will be slower because you will do XML passing. Of course, eval has, has its own security concerns, but as long as the server and the client side is your own, you don't have to worry much about it. So this is the example which I was talking about. So I'll say eval bracket, and I can just put this string over here, and I'll get the result object. Uh, so if you're new to JSON, what do you use to convert your server-side entities into JSON? Well, there are plenty of libraries. On Java itself, there are so many libraries. My favorite is JSON library from Google and Jackson library also. So these are much more advanced libraries, but overall, even if you use odd.json, it suffices your need. So RESTful is a representational state uh, transfer protocol. I'm again talking about uh, the methods. I'll use get to retrieve, put to create, post to update a state, and delete to delete the thing. Now, RESTful, if people are new to RESTful, you'll see, OK, that's nothing new. It's not even a protocol. It's just, it just away I'm doing HTTP calls that's all it is so why should I use it well here's a reason why you should use it there's a site called this program web.com which sources which hosts around 3700 web services open web services some of them are Facebook Twitter a lot of Google services Foursquare all of these services are restful and mostly JSON and that's the reason why you should look into that. Now, if somebody or some of you are new to mobile application development, the best application you can create is look up a web service which doesn't have a good application on the Android market or iPhone market and create a client for it. Simple as that. Now, you can create a mashups using a couple of these services. You can use Google Maps and you can use Twitter APIs. You can say, I'm interested in Twitter APIs uh, in four kilometers range. And then you can plot them on a map. And there you have a mashup. You're using Twitter, you're using Maps. Let's talk about implementing a RESTful web service. What do you need to do? You need to write a servlet. You need to implement a do get, do post, do delete, do put method. Then we tell the business logic that, okay, I got a request to create this user, so I'll put it in the database and I'll get a new ID and I'll create a JSON a message and give the JSON message back. <gasps> well, that's a lot of work, seriously. Now, this thing can work if you're working on a small project, but it's still painful. So what do you do? So typically, if you go with a servlet or something like a EJB or something else, you're typically marrying your code with, with that thing. So instead of saying that my code extends a servlet because I'm a servlet who is handling a restful uh, call, it's, it's not really something which I'm proud of. What I really want to do is I want to be single. I want to be a pojo. I want to be a service a simple Java class which is converted to a RESTful service. So we'll talk about JAX-RS in a while and there'll be a code example which we'll be showing. This is the part one. The part two of the presentation will soon follow up.